Alright, hello. Today I'm going to be doing a video on SCIM, the uh, spreadsheet manager for the terminal. SC stands for spreadsheet calculator. It's one of a few different forks. Uh, the IM that is one of a few different forks of SC. And I've been trying it out just because I've been getting more into uh, some data work. Uh, and I didn't really want to use Excel or Google Sheets, so I was trying it out. I like the idea of it being uh, sort of VIM bindings, you know, HJKO. I think it's like double O to make a new row or something, so it's very similar, like easy, insert a new row above or below where you are, delete the row above where you are, below where you are, where you are, yank your whole row, yank your whole column. Insert a new column next to the one you're at, you know. All the good uh, Vim-like stuff, just very easily key bound, has normal mode, visual mode, command mode, insert mode, so everything you'd expect from Vim, and I like the idea of it being a terminal program, and it uh, having, you know, a Vim, Vim-like scheme. Let's go to the uh, help here, and you can see that it starts off uh, going over that it's a modal spreadsheet editor. The commands they use for the command mode seem to be something they've made themselves. And uh, a lot of it seems to revolve around uh, you have an input text as either a string value or a numeric value when it treats those separately. You can have string values and numeric values in the same boxes, and uh, there are some different uh, functions that call them. So you can call the string value only from a box and work on it, or the numeric value only from a box and work on it. And so far, I haven't really found that to be very helpful. If anything, it makes the uh, command system more verbose and a little hard to work with, and I feel like the same thing could have just been handled by using regexes and it would have made the entire system just more, more universal. So, so far I'm not really a fan of separating strings and numerics out into two different things and working with them separately, but we'll have to see, I haven't used this too much yet. So all the commands are not exactly Vim-like, but you see like D0, delete until the beginning of a line, D dollar sign, delete till the end of the line. Like they're very, very similar. It's definitely Vim-based. I have been uh, using it to edit a bit, so let me press back a couple. Oops, sorry. I am, I am editing the thing. Let me press back a couple times and go to the top back once more. And as just as an example of some actual work, so it it separates strings into text or into numerics, and then it highlights them separately automatically. So this green here shows it inserted as uh, numeric, and I think it adds the decimal point on by itself, and you can tell it in formatting, hey, I don't want this to be a floating point number. And then this, since it's in purple, you can tell that it's been input as a string. And I've sorted this uh, with the sort command for strings in SCIM, and it, it sorted it okay by the first number, which is what I wanted anyway, but uh, you'll see if I scroll through here, it's not perfectly sorted, like it goes from 1 to 10, so it's, it's not sorting it uh, by numeric value, but more like place by place going over, which isn't exactly what I wanted, but didn't break my use case here, so I don't care too much, but if I wanted to have more control over that, honestly, I probably would have had to switch all of these dates over from being a string into being a numeric, and that would have been a little annoying out of the do because I just imported this imported this file. I didn't make all of this in SCIM, so that's just something to be aware of. And I've been playing around with the commands here. I wanted to basically make a month column 
and look at this first digit here, which is the month, and then, you know, other things equal, just be able to propagate it down and have it put the month in from you automatically down into the 30,000 or whatever pieces of data entered in here. Uh, so I just added in a throwaway first number, it really doesn't matter, like I said I only care about the month name, which is going to be this middle value, so I made this script with the commands of SCIM, and as you can see it gets a bit verbose, it's, a, it's just getting the date, and uses date, and then calls the TTS function, which takes three numerics, uh, 19, comma, and then this is just a big if statement, uh, this just turns the string into a number because it needs to work with them definitely. Like I said, the fact that it works with them definitely just ends up making these scripts feel a bit more verbose than they have to. And that if this uh, equals uh, substring, and then I get the string value because I have to either get a string value or sorry, there's, there's army helicopters all by. I really hope this doesn't work on the video. I get the string value of, and I did this because I've been going at this for a while. Um, I think I've closed the program and reopened it, so I can't just go back to my history and show you. But I've had a bunch of different things inside the substring to get a label of the row anonymously, so let's say B1, B2, B3. Uh, I didn't want to have to just keep typing that. I wanted to have it just be B and then the number based on whatever column I'm in for the function being run. And I've tried a bunch of, I tried a bunch of different ways. I tried the concatenation in this. It has three ways. It's either with a hash, a semicolon, or a plus for three different kinds of things you're concatenating and just none of them, like some of them worked in different places but not in others, which is another thing I don't like about the commands. It doesn't really seem quite as powerful as something like Vim or a full flight spreadsheet system like Excel. But this works for getting the anonymous row, uh, just having me B and then my row as a string value and throwing, that, that'll just get the entire value in that box, and then I can just get the substring of that, as opposed to, because you could just put, like, say, B1 here as the first entry into substring, and then get the substring of that, and that will work as well, but concatenating B and 1 together doesn't work, and using the function that's built in here, there we go, uh, this one is just supposed to get an entity, um, so like I say, you want to, instead of putting A0 and then A1 for the last row, you could just get the last row no matter what it is like this, and then 0 would put in the A there for the 0th column. That didn't work in any strings, it only worked with numbers, so it, it just didn't seem fully thought out, so this was the only possible way I could get this to work. So there's definitely a way to get things to work, it's just there seems to sometimes be multiple ways to get certain things to work, and sometimes it's going to feel like there's no ways to get other things to work until you eventually find it, so it it's not fully flushed out in that regard. And then it basically just checks to see if the second character is a slash, and if it is, it just puts out the first character as the second value into my DTS, and if it's not, it gets out the first two characters as the value into my DTS, you know, to handle either, you know, the first nine months or the 10, 11, 12. And then I just threw in a throwaway one here because it needs to be in a certain format, and I only care about the middle one. And then this just tells it print the name of the month as the full month not abbreviated, and the lowercase b would be just like J-A-N for January. So, it took me a while to figure this out and just get used to the script, and as you can see here, it works, and if I go down to the very, very bottom, and just get this on the screen, perfect. And if I run it again down here, you can see September, so it, it works regardless of where I run it, it works, but there's actually a built-in function to propagate it down the row. So if I run this here and go into visual select mode and then hit the hash symbol, and then I run the 
F copy, it'll copy the function down the row, and this is where I pretty much gave up on using SCIM for any kind of real work uh, beyond just a fun project as the terminal spreadsheet manager. And it, I already showed you that this should work. This is able to look at the row it's running and and uh, find the information regardless of me having to type it in individually, but it still says January when I showed you before this should say September. So even though it says that F copy over here can I F copy let me cool. Copy a formula of a selected cell down a number of rows. I, great. So why is it that it's copying the value of the formula when I ran it? Like why is it not running this again for every single row? Like it does say that it is extendable with Lua and with C. So maybe I just need to do that to unlock out some of these more powerful features that I would get in Google Sheets or Excel. But I was very, very disappointed after spending all of this time getting an anonymous function and be, being able to just have it run on each cell and get the information I want from it and then not being able to comfortably propagate it down down the lower column and have that work and just I just really don't understand if I'm doing something wrong or if this spreadsheet really is maybe it's just made by one guy as a pet project and obviously it's not going to be as powerful as something like SCIM but or sorry, as something as Excel but then but I kind of feel like what's the point even of, of having it where is its place to exist you see here Lewis scripts and triggers so I could possibly try extending this with Lua. I've been getting better with Lua recently. And I might try that just because it hits you know, two things for me is maybe making this program useful and getting better at Lua at the same time. But I'm really not stoked on this program anymore after using the F copy to copy the function down 32,000 lines and having the, it just seemingly copy the value and not the function. The only thing I can think of is it's copying the function and its value down through. Like I can find some way to rerun the function on now, like just quick command, like hey, please reload. Like I'm supposed to go hit Control Shift L to reload the page, but I don't see that rerunning the function. So I, I just don't know uh, if anyone else out there knows uh, more about the program and how to get that to work. I would be very interested, but until then, I'm probably going to give up on this until I try to extend it with Lua or C. And if I do that, I'll probably have a video on that. Uh, it's been Ryan. Have a good one.